Riding body position can be a dead giveaway of a new or inexperienced rider. Sometimes, just by looking at how a rider sits on his bike, you can instantly tell he doesn't really know what he's doing. So today, let's discuss proper body position for riding our bikes. <laughs> proper riding position, what a nonsense! Surely anyone with half a brain can approach the motorcycle and sit on it correctly. It is not that people try to sit backwards or sideways or, I don't know, lay down. Riding position is a pretty trivial thing, am I right? Weirdly enough, the answer is no. A lot of people indeed ride with the wrong body position, which can result in bad handling of the bike, fatigue, numb hands, arm pump, some neck and back issues and other stuff like that. Typical wrong beginner body position on a motorcycle revolves around the body. Body is positioned comfortably somewhere in the middle of the seat. Heels are placed comfortably on the foot pegs because this way the knees are bent the least possible amount. Again, pretty comfy. Knees, by the way, are just comfortably flopping around because why not? Essentially, our guy sits on the bike like he would be sitting on chair or a bench. The only difference is he has to extend the arms forward to reach the handlebars, because there is the throttle there. Plus, he obviously needs to hold on to something to not fall from the bike when it's accelerating. There is a whole bunch of problems with such a riding posture. Sitting on the bike like a sack of potatoes allows our body center of mass to flop around, which in turn constantly changes the combined center of gravity of the rider and the bike. This essentially results in a wobbly ride in corners, which is not very good. Because we want to keep our flopping body on the bike, we have to grip the handlebars rather hard, which results in more fatigue. By sitting too far and reaching to the handlebars, we can't steer very effectively. And the feet dangling from the foot pegs are just asking to become acquainted with the pavement, when the bike leans a little bit more than usual. We can do much better. Let's have a look at the proper riding position. Instead of the body, it revolves around the arms. For riding on the street, on the roads, Ideally, we want to give our steering as much freedom as we can. Due to the steering geometry, the front wheel of our bike constantly corrects itself as it goes forward, providing stability to our trajectory. The vast majority of the time, we want to let the front wheel do its job and interfere with it as little as possible. Loose and relaxed arms is a key to that. If we sit a little closer to the tank, we can keep our arms bent, loose and very relaxed. This way, we allow the front wheel do its job, we don't restrict its motion. Plus, with relaxed arms and hands, we now can operate the throttle, brake and clutch much more precisely. Because our elbows are bent, we now have a whole range of motion for steering instead of what we had previously. Also, Let's have a look at how we position our hands. It's a matter of personal preference, but people usually feel most comfortable and in control when they have a flat wrist. It allows direct transfer of force during the steering process. If we have our wrists bent like this, they can flex a bit during steering, which can cause some extra fatigue after a while. Personally, I like my wrists bent just a little like this. I don't know why, it just feels better. But most of my students prefer a flat wrist. So try for yourself and look what suits you the most. Now let's move on to the feet. Instead of letting them dangle like this, we can put the balls of our feet on the foot pack. First, it obviously removes them from harm's way, which is good. Second, now we can do standing up on the foot pegs in case we need to ride over the pothole or jump the speed bump. Additionally, if we look closely, on most road bikes we can see a metal plate near the foot pegs. It is weirdly convenient to rest the foot against it, as if somebody put this plate specifically for this very reason. 
This allows us to feel a bit more planted on the bike. This is the default position for our feet. For a beginner, it is a very good practice to return to this position every time after braking or switching gears. Another important part of our riding position is our knees. We need our knees to clamp to the motorcycle. This removes the weight from our arms. It is very important to keep them loose and relaxed, remember? So, it is a good idea to keep our knees slightly pressed against the tank. It is not really necessary for riding on a straight line with a constant speed, but on accelerations, braking or in corners it starts to play a big role. To make a habit of this, when you are training, you can put something like a piece of paper between your knee and the tank. If it stays there during your exercises, you are doing a great job. And now we are left with the upper body. Notice how in the wrong body position uh, we started with the upper body and now it is sort of an afterthought. That's because our upper body position is being derived from the arms and legs position. There is only so much room for our upper body once we have our arms, feet and legs in place. That's why, for example, on sport bikes we are forced to be in this shrimp body position. If we try to sit straight, we end up with completely straight and locked arms, which results in a poor handling. These bikes are just made for performance, not for a comfy riding. On the other end of the scale, if we take a touring bike, for example, we can sit completely straight and still have loose and bent arms, and our feet still will be in the right place. So, our upper body position is determined by the legs and the arms position, not the other way around. But there are a couple of things about upper body position which are worth mentioning. For general street riding, it is usually better to keep our bike straight, not hunched. If you need to reach the handlebars instead of bending the spine like this, it is better to lean forward like this. This way we will have less fatigue in our neck, because it will also be straight. And another important thing about upper body is our core muscles. We use our feet and legs to anchor ourselves on the bike and we engage our core muscles on braking, acceleration and in corners to stop our body from flopping around and messing with our bike's trajectory. In conclusion, correct riding position revolves around hands and arms. We should keep them bent, loose and relaxed. We use them to steer and control our bike, not to hold on to it. We clamp to our bike with our knees and feet. This is what keeps us planted when we corner, accelerate or brake quickly. And we engage the core muscles to keep our upper body from going floppy-floppy all over the bike. This and a lot more you can see at my new beginner rider video course, which will be available on the link below this video on my website. And that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching, please like, share and subscribe and I hope to see you soon. Bye!